Luke chapter 23. And the whole multitude of them, rising up, led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man perverting our nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, and saying that he is Christ the King. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? But he answering said, Thou sayest it. And Pilate said to the chief priests and to the multitudes, I find no cause in this man. But they were more earnest, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. But Pilate, hearing Galilee, asked if the man were of Galilee. And when he understood that he was of Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him away to Herod who was also himself at Jerusalem in those days. And Herod, seeing Jesus, was very glad, for he was desirous of a long time to see him, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to see some sign wrought by him. And he questioned him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes stood by, earnestly accusing him. And Herod with his army set him at naught and mocked him, putting on him a white garment, and sent him back to Pilate. And Herod and Pilate were made friends that same day, for before they were enemies one to another. And Pilate, calling together the chief priests and the magistrates and the people, said to them, You have presented unto me this man as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I, having examined him before you, find no cause in this man, in those things wherein you accuse him. No, nor Herod neither, for I sent you to him, and behold, nothing worthy of death is done to him. I will chastise him therefore and release him. Now of necessity he was to release unto them one upon the feast day. But the whole multitude together cried out, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city and for a murder was cast into prison. And Pilate again spoke to them, desiring to release Jesus. But they cried again, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said to them the third time, Why, what evil hath this man done? I find no cause of death in him. I will chastise him therefore, and let him go. But they were instant with loud voices, requiring that he might be crucified. And their voices prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him who for murder and sedition had been cast into prison, whom they had desired. But Jesus he delivered up to their will. And as they led him away, they laid hold of one Simon of Cyrene coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him to carry after Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning to them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not over me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the day shall come wherein they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that have not borne, and the paps that have not given suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall upon us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if in the green wood they do these things, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they crucified him there, and the robbers, one on the right hand, and the other on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But they, dividing his garments, cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the elect of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be king of the Jews, save thyself. And there was also a superscription written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of those robbers who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Neither dost thou fear God, seeing thou art under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done no evil. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou shalt come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to thee, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And it was almost the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. 
and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And saying this, he gave up the ghost. Now the centurion, seeing what was done, glorified God, saying, Indeed, this was a just man. And all the multitude of them that were come together to that sight, and saw the things that were done, returned, striking their breasts. And all his acquaintance and the women that had followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, who was a counselor, a good and a just man. The same had not consented to their counsel and doings, of Arimathea, a city of Judea, who also himself looked for the kingdom of God. The man went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And taking him down, he wrapped him in fine linen and laid him in a sepulchre that was hewed in stone, wherein never yet any man had been laid. And it was the day of the Paris Eve, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women that were come with him from Galilee followed after, saw the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And returning, they prepared spices and ointments, and on the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment.